so, ooh, did it make a, oh, it's still on. I thought maybe my batteries had run down. Anyway, good afternoon. I, this video is especially for Judy to answer some questions she had for me this morning. And so, Judy, I hope you're there. Okay, now, we talked about Crocs, and I brought out, well, two more Crocs. This Croc here came from my grandmother. Uh, that would be uh, on my mother's side. Okay, um, actually, she had another big Croc that I just loved, and when we moved from Napa to Crane Creek, Judy, that one was stolen. But I, when I was just, uh, when John <laughs> was just a young one, I made that crock, and I think it was a five gallon crock, I made it full of kosher type pickles, which meant no vinegar, it was all done by salt. And that's the last time I did it, but I always had visions, and it had lots of dill in it, and they were very good of doing it again. But that's my story on the Crocs, but these two are brand new, and they just came from a, a natural food store here in town. And I wouldn't recommend ordering Crocs online because it's so heavy, unless you were lucky enough to get free shipping. And this one, it says on here, one, so I don't know if that means one gallon, I assume it does. What does this one say? This one doesn't say anything. But this is actually too big for me. So I always thought this was a gallon size here, but maybe it isn't. But this, I love this size right here. And you can see, see that's quite a bit bigger and it's bigger diameter, so maybe that's a half gallon, I'm not sure. But it would hold two heads of cabbage really easily, and I actually only put one in at a time. Okay, so there's that. And before I, oh, and I wanna show you, these are really good to get to. And they're stoneware, what do they say? They're made in Ohio, mine are and they come from Zanesville, Ohio. And I guess they have a one on them, so maybe they're to fit in one gallon uh, crocs. But they fit in this one and this one both. And I've got two sets. So that's another thing. So when I, I've got, um, my vegetables in here so I'm not going to show you and I'm not going to make new today but uh, when I put my vegetables in I usually save the outer leaves of the uh, oh where's my little outer leaves of the cabbage and put at the very wait just a minute this is not quite how I usually have it okay anyway I have this little saucer I put the cabbage leaves down over the grated or sliced thin cabbage and then I put that on top of the leaves and then the weights the weights go on top of this. Oh and I'm just going to bring it up here. I have a gallon jar of water and then that goes and pushes down on the top of it. Okay. Now, I want to show you something else. When I'm preparing the cabbage, whoops, this also probably came from my grandmother's house. And I found out since I've been doing these videos, Lois told me that it's an actual cabbage stomp. But I, I like to work it this way too and just press it down on the cabbage. So if you can get something like this, maybe look in some old uh, secondhand stores or something, you might, might discover our antique stores, but don't pay an arm and a leg for it. I bet, I bet one like this could be made, couldn't it? Oh, and my leg in the shop. Yeah. No problemo. No problemo. So, and I'll 
also I've used rolling pins. I mean, I could make one of those for $45, $50. Well, yeah, no problem. A anyway, you want to be able to crush that cabbage, that vegetable, because you have to break down the tissue so that juices will flow <clears throat> out of it. So that's the object of that. Okay. And then I just want to tell you, Tom, if you hear something that you think I'm missing or getting wrong, let me know, okay? Okay. You want me to tell you if you <laughs> Well, yeah, if, if you think... I thought we decided that I didn't look good with black guys. Oh, Tom, Tom. <laughs> <laughs> no funny, no funny stuff or you're going to be black and blue, hun. <laughs> no, not again. Again. <laughs> Okay, <laughs> shoot, <laughs> this is supposed to be serious here. Anyway, <laughs> I want to tell you, uh, so you have more microbes in your body than there are stars in the Milky Way. Wow, they are inside you and on you and everywhere you go. You take your cloud of bacteria with you. This means that your microbes affect not only your health, but also the health, health of everyone around you. I didn't know that. You need these special microbes to get you, to help you digest your food, make and absorb vitamins, reduce inflammation, and fight viruses. Uh, one of my favorite things that they do is to boost your immune system. Your gut is actually responsible for more than 80% of your immune system. Basically, more, the more good microbes you have, the better your immune system functions. Okay, and then we need to feed that. And what do we feed it? Fermented foods like uh, my cabbage, your vegetables that you put in the brine. Now I want to talk about the brine. When you have crushed and bruised your cabbage and you put it in here and you layer it with your salt and um, I use not two tablespoons of salt for this. I would go scant two tablespoons or heavy one tablespoon and then you can mix it with all sorts of spices. This one I have right now has all spice coriander because I love that and uh, a little bit of caraway and what else I don't know maybe pepper but it, and it has some hot jalapeno peppers in it just one I think but it has a very nice flavor and usually I don't really I'm not a fan of caraway seeds but I notice Evidently, I have the right amount because it tastes really good, this batch. Okay, so if when you put it in there and you salt it and you press it down in 24 hours, it should make enough brine to cover it an inch above the vegetable. Now, if it doesn't in 24 hours, and once in a while it doesn't, but not very often. But if it doesn't do that, then you have to add brine to it. And remember, the brine is tw uh, 20 parts water one to one part salt, which just easy, just remember two and a half cups of water and a scant two tablespoons of salt. And then you can add that. And once you got your brine going, I just reuse my brine. What's left in here now, I'll pour back again. Once in a while, my brine gets a little off. Then I don't save that, and I start over again. I know one time I put one of my eggs in there, and it sort of came apart. and So I threw that brine away and started over. Okay, so that's that. And then I want to talk about kefir and I was making it by powder and Michelle was so kind to me she sent me some kefir grains and 
I just love the kefir and it's so easy. So that's another way to feed those billions or how many uh, microbes we, we have that go with us. Okay, uh, and I was going to tell you just a little bit about kefir. Where was it? Okay, making the basics. Okay, kefir, kefir. Okay, now when I started, I didn't have the grains. I used the powder. And I think it's a good way to go to see if you really like it before you invest in grains and have that. Okay, and I started out because the book recommends Easy Kefir from Cutting Edge Cultures. And she recommends that because that particular brand, what, it, what they do, they grind up the real grains that are dehydrated, I suppose, into powder and and uh, so you get all of the varied strains of the bacteria possible and some of the other brands aren't made that way so what you get is easy kefir from cutting edge cultures and I just ordered it from Amazon I know John doesn't like oh well anyway uh, you can get it from there okay now, also, I'm going to recommend three books, and this is what I've been reading out of. It's Donna Schwenk, I think I'm saying her right, name right, Cultured Food in a Jar. She also has, you can look it up, dot com. She, you can look it up online. She has other information. Traditionally Fermented Foods by Shannon Stronger. I like this book, too. I've learned a lot from it. The first one I ever had and I would recommend always getting one of his. Sandor Katz, K-A-T-Z. There's Alex is his middle name, but anyway, there was a there's a forward forward by Sally Fallon, author of Nourishing Traditions, is in here. So those three books are pretty basic and it would they're nice to have. Okay, oh, I was also, as long as I was into the kefir, I wanted to tell you some of the benefits and the nice things about kefir, if I can find it. I had it marked out here. Okay. Oh. Well, I, I know I had it marked, but I'm not sure I'm going to find it real easy now. I should have put a, a bookmark in it, but it wherever that page is that I have marked, oh, I wish I could find it. No, okay, okay, I think it's back. Okay, here it is. Okay, kefir lowers your blood sugar, and it helps alleviate acid reflux. And I know some of you have talked about having that, and it helps with that. Okay, helps with hay fever. Okay, uh, lowers blood sugar, lowers blood pressure. So, uh, it's, it's real, and it's calming. And I, I, my, I, okay, and then when I make it, this, I, I probably started yesterday. No, I think I started it this morning. Well, whenever I started it, I can see it's beginning to make. So what I do, mm, I'll get one out of the refrigerator. <laughs> and, and this one I really left out. <laughs> And it's really separated and gotten thick at the top. When I drink this one, okay, when I, I'll take out the grains. The grains have a tendency to come to the top. I'll put that in a clean jar, and uh, then 
I'll pour some of this in with it a little bit in the bottom. I'm not, a lot of people strain it and do it that way, but this is my easy way I do it. Since the grains have a tendency to float to the top, especially the active ones, there will be some at the bottom, well I don't know about this one, at the bottom, and you can collect those later on if you want to, but these are the really active ones that will start it. So I put those in a clean jar, fill the jar up with milk, you don't want, um, a, you, you don't want really like homogenized milk. You want good milk. My milk is pasteurized probably at a lower temperature. It's not homogenized. I get cream at the top. By the way, there's cream at the top of this too. And uh, then I pour that, fill the jar up, and then I set it out. And it says it will do it in 12 hours, but lots of times I forget and leave it out 24 hours or overnight before I remember. So, yeah, and I think I'll put this one in too, but I'm going to wait because I want to put it in the right order. I sort of have an order going in there. So I, I think that's it. Um, I hope I covered everything that might help you, but try to find a crock maybe at a, a used, I don't know, antique store, used store, secondhand store, that, that kind. Then if you can't find it there, because fermenting has become such a big thing now, they might have them at Fred Meyers, uh, uh, Walmart, some of those stores. And uh, so look and see if you can find one. Don't get it too big, don't get it too small. This one, is, I'll show you. See, these, these wouldn't fit in. And these are really nice. So wherever they sell the Crocs, they'll probably sell the weights. But if you can't find that, you can find something heavy yourself, I'm sure, to put down on there. But you want to have that also that gallon of water for the first 24 hours to help press the cabbage down and extract the liquid up and make that brine. Okay, there it is. So let me know if that helped and if you have any other questions. And it was so good to visit with you. So, surviving the 80s.